Good morning, everyone. My name is Robert DeFore, and I'm the District Superintendent and CEO of Sullivan BOCES. This morning, we're going to be conducting a parent and community forum to discuss the reopening plans for our students come this September. This is one of three meetings that will be held this week. Each of the meetings will be identical in format. There will be a short presentation where we will discuss our reopening plans. And after the presentation, we will take questions. If we're not able to answer your questions, we will take your name and someone from the BOCES staff will get back to you with answers to the questions. In order to maintain uniformity, I'm going to ask any of our participants that has a question to enter their name in the chat feature. You do not need to put your question in, but we're asking you to please put your name in the chat feature. We will be using the chat feature to call on those individuals that have specific questions. This forum is geared for parents and community stakeholders. Their questions will take precedence over others. At this time, I'm going to ask Natasha Shea, the Assistant Superintendent for Instructional Programs, if she would share her screen with us and we will start with the presentation. During this presentation, other individuals from the BOCE staff will be included to make necessary comments. I would like, I'd ask each of you to introduce yourself when you're making your comments. So Natasha, if you would please share your screen. So we'll go to the first slide and I will narrate the beginning of the presentation. So recent developments, the governor on August 7th announced that schools could reopen under the parameters he had already laid forth. The parameters that the governor had specified was that the region that the school was part of, and Sullivan Bosis is part of the Mid-Hudson region, had to be at 5% or lower. The Mid-Hudson region has been hovering below 1% for the past several weeks. Sullivan Bosis checks on a daily basis, along with our colleagues, to monitor the status of the Mid-Hudson region. And all of our decision-making is contingent on the status of the Mid-Hudson region at any specific point in time. Part of the governor's requirements was to have a series of additional forums for our faculty and staff, which was held this past Friday, and then for our parents and community stakeholders. So we've scheduled three sessions this week at various times to allow individuals to participate at their convenience. Each of these sessions also is being recorded and will be available on our website within 24 hours of the scheduled meeting. Additionally, I hosted a countywide Zoom with the Sullivan County Public Health Services on August 12th at one o'clock with all of the county superintendents and other administrators. On Friday, protocols were released in conjunction with the Public Health Service on the um, identification, testing, and contact tracing that will be followed in Sullivan County. These protocols will be posted on the BOCES website later today, and our goal is to have the same protocols posted on all of the school district websites as well. Next slide, please. So the Sullivan BOCES Thinking Forward Plan had several guiding principles. We used the technology or participation framework. Our planning process for reopening started the second week of May. There were various subcommittees that met throughout May, June, and July to create our plan. The health and safety of our students and staff was a priority for the long-term success of these models. The proposal to begin the school year by transitioning from a training and acclimation period to a hybrid model and then to full person instruction uh, was our goal. The decision for students to attend face-to-face -face or remote is a parent decision. If you do not feel comfortable sending your child back to school, there is a full remote 
option available. A survey went home to all of the parents we have currently on record with us asking what their preference was, whether or not they would return their student in a hybrid format or whether they would choose full remote instruction. Again, it's a parent decision. Next slide, please. So why consider a hybrid model? Opening in a hybrid model will give BOCES staff the opportunity to plan. They implement our new safety practices and procedures with 50% of capacity of our students. To train students on these procedures, to assess social, emotional, well-being, and current academic needs, and to adjust our procedures if necessary with a limited impact on our students. Reduced numbers will help us to see what needs to be adjusted with a more manageable population size and allow us time to train and acclimate students and staff to our new reality. Next slide, please. Hybrid model considerations for health and safety. Health and safety was foremost in our minds. Safety protocols and procedures, screening processes, PPE, increased cleaning frequency based on CDC guidelines. Staff training is scheduled for September 2nd, 8th, and 9th. Student training will be ongoing from the first day they return to school. It's anticipated that September 10th and 11th will be used for reacclimation of the faculty and staff with students returning in a hybrid modality on Monday, September 14th. Next slide, please. Cleaning protocols. Um, Jesse, are you with us? Jesse? Hello? This yes. is. This is okay. Just here. introduce yourself, Jesse, and I'd ask you to go through this, and I believe the next slide, please. Sure. Uh, my name is Jesse Morrell. I'm the, the uh, Facilities Director for Sullivan County BOCES. Um, I'll go over some of the disinfecting protocols. Uh, but first, let me say the basic concept is that the Department of Health um, is, is tasking us with eliminating to the extent possible shared items. Um, and the things that cannot be eliminated, we develop protocols to disinfect those things between users. Uh, and a, a good example would be a common use bathroom. Uh, so what we'll be doing is the increasing the frequency of cleaning and disinfecting of those common use spaces. Um, all New York State Department of Health and CDC cleaning guidelines will be followed. Daily cleaning and disinfecting will take place following all relevant guidelines. Um, we're gonna utilize a, a door hanger um, system to establish communication between the teaching staff and the custodial staff. So the teaching staff will signal to the custodial staff by placing a door hanger, room is ready to be cleaned. When the teacher re re returns the following day, the door hanger will be removed, indicating that the room is now clean, disinfected, and, and uh, okay to continue uh, normal operation. So staff training for cleaning and others, no use of disinfectants will be done in the presence of students and uh, students will not be engaged in any of the disinfecting protocols. Um, no personal cleaning products will be brought into the building. Our concern is uh, incompatibility of, of cleaning chemicals. Uh, custodial staff is trained on the safe and effective use of the disinfectant products. Next slide, please. Cleaning protocols. Frequent cleaning throughout the day of high touch surfaces. These would, would be the, the things that are routinely touched by multiple people. Uh, obvious ones are handrails and doorknobs, um, bathroom fixtures, toilet stall handles are just, just a few examples. Um, and again, our goal is to eliminate uh, to the extent possible all the, all the things that are shared amongst people so we can um, you know, cut back on the potential transmission. Uh, and when we, we always encourage uh, good hand hygiene, um, the first option is always hand washing. Uh, when that's not feasible, we have uh, hand sanitizer available. Okay, thank you, Jesse. So BOCES plan on the return of their students. We will be providing a hyperlink, a QR link, or by paper, a remote screening tool for the use of parents. 
The remote screening tool is basically designed to pre-screen your child to make a determination as to whether or not they should be returning to school. The screening tool is based on the four predefined COVID-19 questions that are stipulated by the guidance from the New York State Department of Health and the New York State Education Department. On arrival, since BOCES does not provide transportation, but rather the di districts arrange for the transportation of their students, and in view of the fact that many of our districts direct ship to us, which means the bus does not stop at any of their campuses, the child is picked up at their door and brought directly to BOCES. So as a an additional safety measure, we will be taking the temperature of each student using a contactless digital thermometer as pictured in the uh, picture on that slide. Any student who has a temperature of 100 degrees or greater will be asked to stand aside until the rest of the students disembark. We will then retake that student's temperature to verify whether or not the individual does still register at 100 degrees or greater. If the student does register a temperature of 100 degrees or greater, they will be put back on the bus and sent back home. Calls will be made to the parents and calls will be made to the district so that they are made aware. We encourage our parents, if your child is exhibiting any signs of illness, please keep them home. Remote instruction is always available. That information will be provided by the teachers and by the principals of each division. Better safe than sorry. If your child is not feeling well, and it could be for a myriad of things, please, as a safety precaution, do not send them to school. If you do send them to school and they do not screen, when we get them off of the bus, they will be returned home. PPE equipment will be available if students or staff do not have their own and when needed for intervention. The wearing of masks by faculty, staff, and students is required at all times unless the student does not, the student has a medical exemption. The medical exemption would need to be in writing by the family's physician and presented before the child returns to school. We have configured our rooms to maximize our efforts at social distancing. Next slide, please. This is what the remote digital screening tool looks like. You will enter the, your child's first and last name and the day you're reporting for. If you're doing it the night before, you would select the following school day. Hopefully, the parents will be doing this screening before they make a decision as to whether or not they place the child on the bus. We then ask you to select the program or campus that your child is going to. The next slide, please. These are the four standard COVID-19 questions. Does your child feel feverish or have any symptoms known to be associated with COVID-19 in the past 14 days, including a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit or greater? Has your child had contact with anyone confirmed or suspected to have COVID-19 within the last 14 days? Has your child been under quarantine and not cleared to return to school? Has your child traveled to a state covered by the COVID-19 travel advisory in the last 14 days? When that question appears on the screen, there is a link to the New York State Department of Health website, um, which currently lists and is maintained on a daily basis, the name of those states that are currently affected by the travel advisory. The questions are designed that you would answer no to all of them. If you answer no to all of them, the last screen you see will be the screen on the left, which says your child is permitted to come to school, and then you would click submit on the bottom. If you answer yes to any of those questions, the screen on the right will appear, instructing you not to send your child to school. Contact the principal for further instructions, and we ask again that you submit it so we have a record of that. Again, this is a pre-screening questionnaire. If your child is not feeling well, please keep them at home for their safety, your safety, and the safety of their fellow students, the faculty, and the staff. Next slide, please. So hybrid model considerations for instruction, flexible scheduling, and a design that incorporates blend of in-person and remote learning, curriculum instruction focusing on power standards, work-based learning, and lab hours. 
related services, OT, PT speech, virtually and in person, therapeutic intervention. Those protocols are currently under development with our faculty, staff, and providers. Social emotional learning and multi tiered support systems. Ongoing professional development. Natasha, is there anything you'd like to add at this point? No, not at this time. Okay, next slide, please. So, our proposed reopening timeline. As I said earlier, conference days for the training of our faculty and staff will be September 2nd, 8th, and 9th. Acclimation and setup days for our classrooms will be September 10th and 11th. Hybrid schedule start date for students, September 14th. Full reopening target date. That will be determined based on continuous monitoring of local conditions and our protocols at that time. Next slide. So, Part of what BOCES does is we take in students from all of the surrounding school districts and provide them with programming. The screen above, uh, on, in front of you basically gives a summary of what each district is doing. We are working with the districts so that we can provide our programming to service the maximum number of students in the county. So Eldred is going to be doing an AB rotating week. They will be starting with students on September 28th. They will be remote up until that time. Roscoe and Livingston Manor are doing an AABB fully remote. They're fully remote, they will be on Friday. The AA and BB refers to the cohorts. All of the school districts are dividing their students into two cohorts to reduce the number of students in the building at any given time by 50%. Fallsburg, Liberty, Monticello, Sullivan West, and Tri-Valley, and Sullivan BOCES are all working on an AA remote BB hybrid schedule. Each district will be bringing in some of their students on more than two days a week, but the majority of their students will be only in school two days a week and remote three days a week. Next slide, please. This will give you an idea of our current registration by program and by school district. You will note that there are a number of school districts that are not part of Sullivan County that do send students to us. The numbers at the bottom of the screen reflect the total anticipated enrollment for that specific program. Our goal is by using a hybrid model, we will reduce that number of students on campus by 50%. Next slide, please. So we sent out a survey to our parents asking whether or not they would send their child back in a remote, I'm sorry, in a hybrid modality, and if not, would they elect to participate 100% remotely? Maria, are you on the call? Maria? Maria, can you narrate what we're looking at, please? Ah, okay, now I'm unmuted, thank you. Um, so we are, um, th th these graphs show in the teal colored, um, the students that have replied that they will only attend remotely and in the royal blue colored, is um, the students that will come face to face. So you can see K-12 special ed, it's 58%, uh, so just not quite 60-40. Um, of 60% of the students will be attending in person, about 40% will be attending remotely. If we look at this chart, which is K-2 special ed, it's kind of flip-flop. This is 58% will be attending remotely 42% will attend in person. Those are the little, the little kids, K2. In 3-6, um, it's sort of flip-flopped. About 55% will be in person and 45% will be remote. 7-8, we'll have more students that are here um, in person. So it's about 62% and 38% will be remote. And it's about the same with the 912 special ed students. 
So it's about 64% will be in person and about 36% will be remote. Um, for career and technical education, we have 74% uh, have said that they will be attending in person and 27%, 26% have said that they are um, attending remotely. And for our alternative education students, and those are 912, um, it's 63% will be in person and 37% will be um, remote. And you can see up here, this is, we've had 334 parents respond. So that's um, just about half of our parents have, res have responded. Um, we asked the question of who has um, access to a computer. And you can see overall 70% of the respondents have said that they have access to some sort of a device to be able to do remote learning. Um, about 32 or 31% have said that they do not. Um, I just have to move this window out of the way. Okay. Um, in CTE, that goes up to 77% of the students in CTE have access to a device. 23% um, do not. In special ed, it's about 50-50, 53% have access to a device and 46% do not. The pink, um, that question was not a required question, so you could skip it. And so the, the ones that are in pink are people that didn't respond one way or the other. And then um, the last one that we have is alternative education about 53% of the students do not have access to a device and 47 do have access to it. 47% do have access to a device. Thank you, Maria. Next slide, please. So preparing to reopen in a hybrid model, there's a number of things that we're presently working on, and that's a coordination of schedules with our component districts. We're working to keep siblings in the same student cohort to maximize parent support and transportation needs. We're also assessing the transition between in-person and remote learning. Components of the hybrid model. Natasha, I'm gonna turn this over to you. Sure. So for students who are participating in the hybrid model or remote model, um, which is the remote portion of the hybrid model that's not in person, the remote piece will look, um, we're going to have a morning meeting starting first thing in the morning to take student attendance. Attendance is required this school year on a daily basis. And we're going to begin with a classroom morning meeting for every grade level and to check on the well-being of our students. That's part of our social emotional learning experience for our students and supports. And the day will kind of look like um, either individual or small group conferencing. Um, there'll be time for student independent work, uh, related services if students qualify. qualify. Um, we'll try to do as many in person as possible. Um, if there are some services that can be held remote, um, we're gonna take that on a case by case basis. And also um, teachers will hold office hours. So if there's um, something that uh, as a parent that you're concerned about, you can email your classroom teacher um, and they'll have some time during the day to be able to respond back to you, either a phone call or um, via email. Would you like me to continue with this? Uh, yes, if you okay. would, please. Sure. So, here is our plan where we are in line with most of our component school districts where we're going to break up our students into two cohorts a and b and our students will come who are in the a cohort assigned will come on monday and tuesday everybody will be remote on wednesday and on thursday friday our b cohort will be face-to-face um, -face in session Similar with CTE, however, our CTE programs, we're working with the school districts and we are dividing our cohorts um, programmatically. So if you are taking a, um, 
certain program, it's going to be on cohort A. So if it's, for example, um, um, health sciences or um, culinary one, it might be on a, a cohort day. So you'll come in person on those days. And those in-person instructions will focus on labs in your work-based learning. So it's the hands-on component of CTE will happen on those cohort days. And we are will keep the same time frame for CTE programs. So your morning session, uh, which runs from 8 to 10.30 and p.m. 11.45 to 2.10 p.m. Um, throughout the day. So there will be independent time on the remote time to be able to work um, and instructional time for those remote sessions to happen. Oh, we probably don't need this. No, you can pass that. So in summary, BOCES is committed to ensuring the health and safety of our students and staff. BOCES will comply with New York State Department of Health and New York State Education Department requirements for reopening of schools. Collaboration with all stakeholders will be a key to the successful reopening of schools in the fall. Ongoing and consistent communication with all stakeholders will be very critical. Continuous monitoring of all operational functions will also be required staffing availability, PPE quantities, students attendance, et cetera. Additional items under consideration. These presentations will vary because new information is always becoming available. The presentation we're showing you will be posted on our website later today so that you can go back and refer to it. We have an FAQ, which is also going to be posted onto our website that was shared with all of you when you got the invitation for this specific meeting. That FAQ will continually be updated to reflect the most current information that we have available. Some of the items that we're currently considering, will we have all the staff we need available to reopen schools? Will BOCES families and students send their children to campus in a hybrid model? What will our actual enrollments be in September and will there be an impact on COSER budgets and staffing? Does Sullivan County have the public health resources needed to support the schools and the BOCES? Will school districts be able to maintain transportation to the BOCES programs? We have a number of our BOCES programs that are located on other properties other than the BOCES main campus. In particular, our health occupations and public safety and innovative design programs are currently located on the campus of SUNY Sullivan. We are constantly in communication with SUNY Sullivan to assure that those facilities are going to be available to us on an ongoing basis, despite what their own individual scheduling may be. Any change in their plans could impact our programming. We're monitoring it closely. Is there a slide after that, Natasha? Will additional reductions in state aid revenue impact BOCES services? Will BOCES resources will be needed if BOCES buildings are required to close again at some point during the school year? What other new requirements or adjustments in our instructional environment will the BOCES and school districts face in the year ahead? These are some of the questions that we're currently working with and that we're working on addressing. Okay, can you unshare your screen please, Natasha? So at this time, we will take questions from parents and students that may be on the call. If you are a member of the faculty or staff and you're on this call, I would encourage you please to email those questions directly to us. We spent a considerable amount of time um, with our staff on Friday. Uh, these calls were trying to get the questions for parents and community stakeholders asked. If you have a question, please enter your name into the chat feature and you will be called on in the order that you put your name into that feature. If we cannot answer your question, we will get you an answer to the question as soon as practical. So the chat feature can be accessed at the bottom of the screen. You would just click on it and type your name in and hit enter. 
So we, we, the first question is from Kimberly Cullen. Kimberly, you would need to unmute yourself. Kimberly? Hello? Yes, are you Kimberly? Yes. I'm just joining because I deal with my daughter. I just have one question because she was the Sullivan County Bow Chief. What's going to line about their therapy if it's just two days a week? Ma'am, uh, you're going in and out. Can you please repeat that? I'm sorry. What is going to go on about their What is going to go on about their therapy if it's just two days a week? Okay, Natasha, would you like to speak to that, please? Sure. If you choose hybrid model for your child, um, we'll do every best effort to make sure all their related services, which include therapy, will be done um, on a face-to-face -face basis. If not, we will schedule them on their hybrid days. Students are required to attend school, if you will, either um, in person or remote on all five days of school. So if you are in hybrid, in the A hybrid model, you're gonna to come to school face-to-face -face on Monday, Tuesday, and you're still gonna attend um, school remotely on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And some of those services may be able to be done then, depending on the student. My daughter's in speech and physical therapy. Okay. And since this whole COVID thing happened, she's had a falling out, and she's gone back to when she was three years old. Okay. What I would recommend, ma'am, is that is the plan that we've shared with you, but please, when you get your child's schedule, be sure to contact the principal for your child's program, share your concerns with them. We're doing our best to address everyone's yeah. concerns as best as possible, okay? Yeah. And what about preschool now? Do you know what's going to go on about that? We don't operate a preschool program, ma'am. That question would need to be directed to your home school district. All right. Okay. That's the only question I had. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Daniel Milloff, if I mispronounced your last name, I apologize. Daniel? Yes, hi. Uh, we have a question. Daniel is in 12, going to 12th grade, and he is in career technical education, health occupation. So can he choose remote learning, or he has to be hybrid? Every parent has the right to choose remote learning for their child. We will be conducting all of our classes fully remote and in a hybrid modality. The only thing that your son may miss by not coming to campus is some of the laboratory work, but we're making arrangements to uh, provide that. That decision though is yours. Uh, Daniel can, I'm, I'm sorry, Daniel can participate in all of his classes remotely if that's what you so decide. Uh, I have a question. Uh, is uh, if I choose remote learning, is there a certain time that I need to log on to remote, le on to remote learning? Or Daniel, like I'm gonna, certain... I don't have the specifics for each of the classes, but there will be a quote unquote homeroom period that you will be required to log into so we can take attendance. Unlike what happened at the tail end of the prior school year, attendance this time is mandatory, but the specifics of exactly what you need to do will be provided by the principal for your program which is Mr. Molusky now, and he'll, uh, he, him and his staff will be communicating directly with you. Uh, well, thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, again, if I mispronounce your name, I'm, I apologize. Janique Paris, am I saying that accurately? Yes. Hi, good morning. <laughs> um, my question is about the buses um, when the students are being picked up. Um, what uh, cleaning protocols do you guys have set up for the bus system and the kids coming in contact with the seats and, you know, stuff like that? Okay, ma'am. So, as I had said earlier in the presentation, Sullivan County BOCES does not provide busing. The busing is provided by each individual school district. It is their responsibility okay. to transport the children to us. So, if that is the specific question you have, I would recommend you direct your question to your home school district, whichever that may be, for them to answer that. The okay. only thing Sullivan BOCES does is we provide shuttle service between our campuses, and we have protocols in place to keep the buses clean and sanitized 
during their runs. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome, ma'am. Um, Pam Conklin. Pam. Good morning, and thank you for the presentation. Um, I have two questions. Um, is in the event, as we've seen in other districts across the country, um, where a child or a staff member uh, ends up positive uh, with COVID, uh, what are the procedures uh, in the event that that happens? Is the class quarantined? Is everyone on the bus? How is that going to be notified? Uh, how will parents be notified in that situation? Okay, so later on this afternoon, we will be posting a link on our website to those protocols. We developed our protocols in, in conjunction with the Sullivan County Public Health Service. They issued documents out to us later on Friday. We've just gone through them and we will be posting those specific procedures uh, on our website. So later on today, you'll be able to see those procedures and it outlines step-by-step step what the response will be and how that response will be carried out. Okay, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, You're my, welcome. my second question is, um, in the event, well, with the hybrid model, um, clearly they're gonna need something at home. Are, are, they, are they gonna do the Chromebooks like they did in the uh, spring and, and, and summer? Yes, if you have a need and you do not have the, uh, the technology available to uh, participate either remotely or in a hybrid, Sullivan BOCES will work with you and your family to provide the equipment just as we had done in the past. That's why on that survey we sent out, we encourage every parent to answer it because it tells us who your child is, whether you have a device at home and what the reliability of your internet connection is. So we will be working with every family. If you don't have a device, we'll make arrangements to get you one. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. Does anybody have any other questions? So folks, we will work with you and your family. It's not an ideal situation, but we will make our best efforts to accommodate everyone and to provide the programming so that your child can learn. It will be imperfect at best, but by working together, we'll make it as effective as possible. I refer you to our website for the most current up-to-date information. A lot of this information will be posted in the next couple of days. The FAQ will be uh, posted and updated regularly. Links to our remote learning plan and to our COVID-19 testing and contact tracing protocols will be up on the website later on today. Um, hold on, there's another question. When will we know? The uh, schedules will be communicated home within Natasha the next week. Is that accurate? Yes, we're hoping to be able to communicate what cohort you are in. Um, if you are in the hybrid model, we do want to take some time with students on the first week of school or so just to make sure um, they understand how to um, come into the building and do all the safety protocols because it will look a little bit different um, as far as instruction is concerned. Okay. Uh, Pam, you had another question? Yes, thank you. Um, I, if I missed it, I apologize. Are there any... 19 testing requirements in place yet for staff or students and will that become a requirement um, before school starts or intermittently during the school year so what we put in place and we did it at the beginning of the presentation and that presentation will be uh, posted uh, so you can take a look at it we are asking the parents to complete a remote screening of their child before they send them to school. And there are a couple of slides in the presentation that identify that. We are also going to be taking the temperature of each student as they arrive to school in the morning. Any child who has a temperature of 100 degrees or higher will be retested. And if they have a persistent temperature in that range, they will be returned home on the bus. Okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. Any other questions? 
Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your time today. The two follow-up sessions are gonna be covering the same material. You are welcome to participate in them if you would like, but um, it will be covering the same material. If you have specific questions about your child, your child's schedule, your child pro program, or your, the protocols that are in place, please contact the principal who's responsible for your programming. Uh, Mrs. Becker is responsible for elementary special ed programming. Mr. Real is responsible for secondary special ed programming. Mr. Molusky is responsible for career in tech. And Ms. Blanton is responsible for alt ed and specialized programs. They or their assistants are there to help you and answers those questions. You can call the main number on our website or you can email them directly. The directory is on the website. So again, I thank you. I wish you a good day and we'll look forward to seeing your child either in person or remotely in the fall. Have a nice day, everyone. Thank you.